Welcome back. The boundary dispute between Aguilero II and Echino Deke, two communities in Anambra and Kogi states, uh, seem unending. Residents are appealing to the federal government to find lasting solutions to the clashes by demarcating the boundary. Our committee report tonight takes a look at the ordeal of the people. Now you're talking. For decades, Agulerio II in Anambra State and Echeno Odeke in Ibaji, local government area of Kogi State, have been at each other's throats claiming ownership of the oil fields on the Omambala River Basin. You have attack with the other town, Kongi people. Then they come, I think time they like they come. When they come, they kill somebody. Anybody, anybody where they see, they will kill her. To give them some relief, a combined team of the Federal and State Emergency Management Agency journeyed to Aguilerio II to see the people have been displaced as a result of communal clash between them and their neighbors. The tale of woe is also written all over the community, which bears all the scars of violence. As I was wearing this cloth, I heard that they have already attacked our neighbor community here. That is exactly what we heard that the two people, three people were wounded by bullets. Now, both yes. the federal and state government team are meeting with the displaced persons. So we decided to come and see them, see the people who are displaced, and see, assess what we can do to alleviate their sufferings. According to the residents, efforts by the National Boundary Commission to demarcate the two communities have met a brick wall. Just of recent, the National Boundary Commission came here, not to the one that we did the last two years, led by Ayo. They came here, called everybody at the other side to school there, at any good to community there. We gathered. They told us that the very day they will commence their work, their, their operation, that the boundary demarcation. And nobody, they, they do not want anybody to do what to go there, either for fishing, for hunting, or for farming. So that there will be an absolute to peace. We said, okay. They went there on the way, even in our own, in our own land, all the work there. They chased them out with the guns and everything. The NEMA team feels it's time to beef up security before any other action is taken. What we are suggesting and appealing to government is to strengthen the, uh, the security between uh, the two states so that um, uh, people will live in peace. While the plea for the federal government to step in intensifies, some have suggested that in separate in these communities, those in charge may need to take a look at the regional plan established before independence, as this can help keep the peace. Nigerian electricity consumers have continued to criticize power companies for sending bills to them under the fixed charge policy. Most of the customers say the bills usually do not represent their monthly electricity consumption as they are usually inflated. And it was based on such complaints that the National Assembly advised the National Electricity Commission to stop using fixed charges in billings. But for the Commission, there is illegal, there is legality in issuing estimated bills as uh, according to them guidelines are outlined which are usually followed in arriving at the fixed charges now to examine the issue of fixed charges and the current electricity generation in the country i'm being joined on the news at 10 by the managing director of an energy-based company in nigeria mr arthur oswagum you're welcome to the news at 10. thank you very much Amarachi. So, uh, people have acknowledged that electricity supply has improved over time, especially under this new administration. Is it because we are generating more and distributing more? Well, it's a combination of uh, factors. Uh, generation has actually improved and the improvement started... Uh, How much are we generating now? Uh, currently, we are hitting over 4,500. Uh, for some time now, we've not been having uh, that quantum of uh, generated power. Uh, also, you will understand that uh, for so many years, 
there have been uh, laws of injection substations that um, the companies have been putting in place. But you know, power infrastructure is not uh, something you do within a week or two weeks. Mm -hmm. So for over 200 of them now are up and running. So that we account for the kind of uh, improvement that consumers have been noticing in the last uh, few months. Mm, and people have been complaining a lot about those fixed charges, which the uh, National Electricity Commission says is legal. So can we continue using fixed charges to uh, determine the exact consumption of electricity by a consumer? Uh, yes. Uh, if you look at um, Section 32 of the Electric Power Sector Reform Act of 2005, it gives uh, the NERC the power to actually appropriate, the power to actually fix what consumers should be paying. Mm -hmm. But far, far back as uh, nine, nine, 2012, it was around 75 Naira. But um, it was increased from 75 Naira to about uh, 500 Naira in 2012, just because of the belief that uh, it will add as an incentive for would-be buyers of the PAC as it were then. Uh, just to take care of the infrastructural uh, costs of bringing some of this stuff back. But what has happened over the years, you will discover that uh, they have now changed that to about uh, 750 naira, which is uh, on the high side. And within where you live, you, you agree with me that I'm sure you have not seen a set of new transformers that have been installed, or you've mm -hmm. not seen uh, overhead cables that mm -hmm. have been installed. So I don't think it's appropriate for NERC to approve that uh, astronomical increase of the fixed charge. Which makes me want to ask again, why exactly has power improved? Well, I, as, as I just mentioned, the power has improved because we have improved generation and the substitute, you know, the, the three components before you can have power. You talk about generation, uh, transmission and distribution. Prior to this uh, 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 improvement, we had the grid capacity. It was just barely within 4,000 megawatts. Now, we are happy that we can be talking about 7,000 megawatts grid capacity. You can have the grid, okay, but how about the distribution? The distribution aspect of it is what my, uh, the, the, the discourse have not been able to do so much on. You know, as I did mention, you've what's, not seen... What's, what's the challenge for them? Why haven't they been able to distribute as much? Cost is one thing. You, you know, in Nigeria today, it's not really easy for you to come out, I mean, uh, 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 approach the bank to get the quantum of fund you need to actually fund some of these uh, huge infrastructure or whatever for you to be able to uh, uh, build the bedrock that you need to actually distribute power. So the cost is one thing. The, the discos are having huge difficulties in raising this fund to be able to uh, uh, finance the huge infrastructural project that is required to improve uh, the distribution aspect of, the, PS, of, of uh, the discos. And the National Assembly has just asked the distribution companies to stop using the fixed charges, but the National Electricity Commission says that this is legal. How can we get a balance, you know, that will be best suitable for electricity consumers in Nigeria? I think the best thing is for NERC to advise these schools to revert back to where we were before. Because it's, it's not proper for even those consumers who do not have electricity, they are also bound to actually pay these uh, several and 50 naira, which is not um, the best way to go. So they can do it in such a way that it's only consumers who are having power supply that can pay a quantum, depending on how long this power is available for consumption. Mr. Arthur Swago, thank you for joining us on the News at 10. Thank you so much, Amarachi. To Port Harcourt now, where the distribution company and the Nigeria Labour Congress in River State have barricaded the office of the electricity distribution company and threatened to shut down power in the South-South. So that threat has been handed over to the management of the company, which oversees electricity distribution in Rivers, Cross River, Akwaibom, and in Bielsa State. They want a recall of SAC workers and a free environment for labor unionism. Next is business news. Let's join Anne Wawodo. You first. First Bank.
Welcome to Business News. The value of Nigeria's total merchandise trade during the second quarter of this year was recorded at 4.372 trillion naira, and this was 0.5% less than the value of 4.39 trillion naira recorded in the preceding quarter. In comparison with the corresponding quarter of 2014, the value of the total merchandise trade decreased by 2.287 trillion naira. Relative to this preceding quarter, a rise of 214.1 billion in the value of exports combined with a decline of 234.4 billion naira in the value of imports improved the country's trade balance. While well, this increased by 448.6 billion naira during the quarter, year on year, the country's trade balance declined by 48.8%, as imports declined by 24.5%, while exports declined even further by 38.5%. Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibajo says that some past policies and even planning, including government's budget, did not reflect the needs of and the conditions of the majority of the people in Nigeria who have become disempowered in the process. He said this when members of the Alumni Association of the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, NIPS, said paid him a courtesy visit at the State House in Abuja. According to the pr Vice President, the important thing now is how policies can address the needs of the people. While expressing concern about extreme poverty in Nigeria, Professor Shibaja challenged members of the Alumni Association to discuss how policy formulation will improve the life of every Nigerian. The central bank has denied granting accreditation to any foreign partners with the, for the printing of Nigerian banks' check books. In a statement from the Apex Bank, all accredited printers for printing of such legal tender have accreditation certificates issued to them. According to the central bank, some of the accredited companies include Superflux International, Triple G and Company, Nigeria Security Printing and Minting Company, Euphoria Group and POPI Printing Company. The Apex Bank said it undertook this exercise to ensure an efficient payment and settlement system. Domestic equities failed to sustain previous sessions rally, while the all-share index closed negative, this time declining 23 basis points, returning year-to-year -year losses to 13.32%. Harriet Agbe has more. Welcome to the stock market report. The equities market did not sustain the 0.68% gain recorded on Tuesday as profit taking gave way to the bears despite the gains from market heavyweight Dangote Cement. At the end of midweek session, the all share index dropped 0.23% to 30,042.38. The market capitalization also fell to close at 10.297 trillion naira. Market breadth was negative as only five stocks appreciated, led by Dangote Cement, Flour Mills of Nigeria and Paintcom. On the flip side, GSK, with a percentage loss of 4.97, was the top loser for the session. The equity-led Cadbury Nigeria, Okomo Oil and 35 other stocks. Banking stocks were the most traded. UBA was the most active today with 65.94 million units. It's followed by Axis Bank with 39.13 million units and Sky Bank with 30.41 million units. When the session ended, 299.7 million shares had been exchanged by investors in 3,556 deals valued at 2.55 billion naira. Those are the day's trading figures. I'm Harriet Agbini. Thanks a lot, Harriet. Let's now see how markets traded globally. Well, that's it on Business News tonight. I'm Anne Mwawadu. Amarachi will be back with the rest of the news at 10. You first. First Bank. 
Water is the most commonly used reagent, and if it is, its quality is compromised, the ultimate formulation or products it is used to manufacture would be substandard. That's why the Standards Organization of Nigeria, in conjunction with Merck and their partners in Nigeria, Kachi Limited, organized a one-day training workshop for lab water purification in Lagos. The training is the first of its kind in West Africa. Our correspondent, Mary Alale Yusuf, attended the seminar and now reports. This training session, organized by the Standards Organization of Nigeria, SON, in conjunction with Merck and powered by Kachi Limited, partners of Merck in Nigeria, is attended by heads of laboratories, quality control managers, and representatives of food manufacturing companies. The aim is to train participants to purify water for formulations in line with global best practices, a process which SON is very interested in. Most of the time, due to economic crisis or lack of knowledge, you carry out analysis, you chop out results that has no bearing to the products you are producing. The keynote speaker delivers a lecture on the importance of different levels of water purification. What is important is that I produce the exact type of water that I need for my, for my experiment. I don't want to, to produce uh, a, a water quality which is higher than I need or lower than I need. And this is the challenge in water purification. And if you are curious to know whether these processes are actually possible in Nigeria, the CEO of Kachi has this to say. They're being done by some companies, some serious companies. Um, they can be done. We've actually seen laboratories that go to collect condensate water from the air conditioner and they use them to do analysis. I think uh, the problem is that of ignorance. When people don't know the consequences of what they're doing, they think they're saving money but it ends up being more expensive. When you use the right, wrong water for your analysis, you get the wrong results. You also diminish the life of your equipment. She adds that Kachi Limited has been partnering research and development globally to deliver safer consumables to the Nigerian populace and those the country is expected to export to. Mary Alale Yusuf, Channels Television News. Next on the news at 10, Nigeria begins 2015 Afro Basket campaign on a solid note. Details on sports news, please stay with us.